we've certainly enjoyed the blessing of just being here. I'm sure we all have. Uh, and I know that we're ready to leave and certainly we're going to get you right on out of here. We want to say something to encourage uh, the family once again. Um, today our prayers and our heart it goes out with you because you're going to need it. Amen. You think about all of the memories and all the good times that you spent with Larry. Uh, they're going to always come a reflective part and even they're reflecting right now. As you're going through your times of tears and your memories. And I started to just do just for a second a message for you. Called the Lord. You think about when God, he does things for us. And we try to reflect upon others. We want to use for a subject. Our lives are told. As a tale that is told. Which will be found in the book of Psalm chapter 90. If you're at home sometime and if you haven't read it and it was read even in our hearing today, take time out and read it. Because even the psalmist said that, Lord, teach us to number our days. Yes. Yes. You know, and when we think about that we don't have long down here, yes. it makes us to strive to do better. Amen. Because that's what God requires. He requires that we do the things that will please him the most. You think about Enoch, the Bible talks about him in Genesis 5. It talks about how that he walked with God and God had taken him. And then it talks about his son, Methuselah. Methuselah came in this earth and he lived. And the Bible said he lived to be 969 years old and he died. We want the Bible not only to be a part of our life as we live in pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God, that in his time we would hear him saying, well done. Yes. Yes. But we don't want to live upon this earth that many years and certainly we won't. But this man lived 969 years and the Bible said he had sons and he had daughters. Yes. Yes. He had grandchildren. He had great grands. He had as many grands as your mouth could ever speak. A man living that old, you knew he had so many. And then the Bible said, he died. We want it to be said more about us, even in this life. We stop to think at times, what will our obituary say? What would people stand up even during the time of our funerals? Wonder what they would say. Some of the greatest lies have been told during the time of funerals. People stand up and they talk about us. But it don't matter what people say about us when we're dead and gone. What's going to matter is when God says, well done. You good and you faithful servant. You've been faithful of a few things. Come. I'll make you rule a minute. We can't put anyone in heaven. We can't even put ourselves there. But we can send our souls to hell. Listen at Jesus' philosophy, yes. Matthew 16, 24. The Lord said, if any man would come after me, yes. let him deny himself, take up his cross, yes. and follow me. Yes. And then the Lord said, what shall it profit a man yes. if he shall gain this whole world and yet lose yes. his own soul? Yes. So the only thing that we can ever say is our souls. Yeah. You know, we'll have family, we have friends, we'll have even sometimes the enemy, they will come and they will say words of comfort about us. They will say things that will console the family and all of everything else. People are going to be talking about us. Our lives are told as a tale that is told. Sometimes you think about the question that people ask, the question that they don't ask yes. concerning salvation. The world's greatest question that has ever been asked is the question of what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be a Christian? People are hardly asking that question anymore. You can hardly set up a Bible study with someone. But here the psalmist said, and this message will indeed be yours. 
He says in Psalm chapter 90, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountain were brought forth, forever thou hast hindered, even formed the earth and the world. And even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and says, Return ye children of men for a thousand years in thy sight. I put it yesterday when it was past. And as a watch in the night, thou carriest them away as if a flood. They are asleep in the morning. They are like grass which grow it up. In the morning it flourish and it grow it up. And the evening it is cut down and withered. But we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquity before us, our secret sins, even in the light of thy countenance. For all of our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet in their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of the things of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us, teach us to number our days, that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. That's what we need. That's what we all need. We must know and understand that one day we're going to leave this place. God has not placed us upon this earth to be mourners. To just wait till someone leaves and we talk about going to the funeral and we talk about what we're going to say. He has not placed us down here for this. James said, what is your life? Your life is just but a vapor. It appeared for a little while and it soon vanish away. Yes. So we need to be doing something. Yes. You can talk to old people, people that are almost in their graves. Yes. And you try to get them to come to the worship service. Yes, sir. And some will still yet say to you that uh, they don't have time. Yes. Yes. Or they think of some kind of excuse and they'll say that they'll come with you on the following Sundays. And you never see them. Amen. You're closer than the, to the grave than most of us are. You won't have that long. Young people we know are leaving this world and they're leaving this world in great numbers. But you're almost a hundred years old. Your time is short. First Peter 4, the time has come. That judgment must begin at the house of God. And the Bible said if judgment first began at us, what shall the end be of them who obey not the gospel? And he said, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? If those of us who say that we're Christian and strive to live a Christian life, if we just barely make it in, what you think gonna happen to those of you that didn't try? We ought to stop walking around here telling folks that we're Christians. Amen. Sometimes when we tell them, people look at us and they say, I'm glad you told me because otherwise I never would have known. Amen. Just live the life that God tells us to live. People will see it. If you're not a Christian, you need to be. You say, what must I do to be saved? You must hear the gospel of God, Romans 10, 17. So then faith come by hearing. Hearing come by the word of God. You must believe his word, Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that's coming to God must first of all believe that God is. He's a reward of them that diligently seek him. You must repent of your sin. Luke 13, 3 and 5, Jesus said, I tell you no. But except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. We must confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is God's son. Matthew 10, 32 and 33, the Lord said, For whosoever shall deny me before men, I'll deny him before my Father which is in heaven. Amen. 
And whosoever shall confess me before men, I will confess him before my Father, which is in heaven. Methuselah lived to be 969 years old, and the Bible said he had sons and daughters. We want it to be said more than this about us, that we lived and we only got babies in this world as we worship and serve the great God of heaven. 